Are you ready? Can crush us. It don't really get no better than this. The podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the Mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the Dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need and end. It ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. What's going on, you guys? This is the CEO of Shane Taylor Promotions and the baddest of all time, Shane Taylor, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. From one bad boy to another, welcome to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Mark DeMarc Martinez, and no, 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 I'm not calling myself the bad boy. Shane Taylor brings us in this week, and this week's interview is with the Mississippi bad boy, Zay Gates. Guys, Zay is a young, up-and-coming superstar. Yes, I said that. Superstar in the professional wrestling business. Make sure you get out there, follow him on all the socials. Make sure you follow his career as it gets ready to explode. I have a lot of questions for him, though. A lot of questions. You know the questions that we normally have. I'm going to throw some other ones in there. And I'm super excited to find out just some of his story. Okay? Zay reached out to me. When I put a post up on Instagram, he's like, hey, let, let's hook up and talk. These are the ones that I like. I didn't know anything about Zay prior to this interview. So I'm going to find out everything with you here on Can't Crush Your Spotlight this week. Episode 499. This Saturday is the big one. Myself and Sir Michael Jenks is going to blow your mind with the guests that we have. Super excited about that. But that's not... What we're here today. Today we're here about Zay Gates. And of course, collar and elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and the hooligans have down there. Go and buy all the merch you possibly can. And then use the promo code CANCRUSHERS to save 10%. Saving money is amazing in this day and age. There's not a lot of places that you can save money. Collar and elbow is going to allow that by using our promo code CANCRUSHERS. Capital C and Can, Capital C and Crushers saves you 10%. Also, you guys have noticed we have a WWEShop.com code. So if you're going out there, I'm going to say this, all right? And I begrudgingly say this. Christmas is right around the corner. It really is. So if you want to go out and buy some of the shop stuff, a new Seth Rollins shirt, a new Rey Mysterio shirt, whatever, use that code and it'll benefit me and you. So that's really cool. You know that we have a code, it'll help us both out, do it. It's it's life changing, I don't know if it's life changing, but you get it, you get it, sorry I'm a little bit perched all of a sudden. Where can you listen to us? Oh my goodness. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, all of them. And don't forget IMDb. Yeah, a podcast on IMDb. That's really cool. But we're also on Podurama. Guys, if you're just tuning in, finding us on Can Crushers, and you're looking for a new podcast place, Podurama. Seamless. From phones to laptops, Androids to iOS, desktops to Google, Podurama has you covered, that it'll just continue to be seamless for you. And you can see what number episode we're on for Can Crushers. $4.99. $4.99. Getting ready for the big one. I said maybe not, but maybe again we'll mention that a couple more times. Where else? All the socials. Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, and Threads. We're out there. Go ahead. Do it all. Join the conversations. DM us. If you're a wrestler and you'd love to be on the show after you listen to this one to find out kind of what we're talking about, it's your story. That's what the Can't Crush Your Spotlights are about. Your story. How you got into professional wrestling. 
and then like what wrestlers you like. Da, 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 da. Tell your story. Reach out in any of those DMs or the old fashioned way. Did you? I heard this the other day that Gmail or uh, email in general is getting old. What? That's essentially what a DM is. It's still a, an email, but cancrusher69 at gmail.com. We'll hook you up. We'll get you scheduled. You come on and tell your story, just like the Mississippi bad boy, Zay Gates, after Al Snow. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow the wrestling brand. Hey, this is the Smoking Gun, Kane Carter, and you're listening to Can Crusher's podcast, and y'all strap in for this episode. This will be a good one. And welcome back to Can Crusher's. Guys, you heard in the intro how excited I was to talk to Zay Gates, and we're just going to dive into this young, up-and-coming wrestler that is going to take over shortly. And I give it the shortly because we always say Rome wasn't built in a day. But welcome to Can Crusher, Zay. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? Doing well. I'm doing well. So before we get into how you found wrestling and everything, can you give um, everybody a kind of like an overlook of y- you as of right now? Without going too far, where are you at? What What are you doing? And, you know, stuff like that. So I'm the Mississippi Bad Boy Zay Gates. You know I've been wrestling for like uh, three years now. I started training in August of 2020. I'm currently wrestling in Indianapolis, Indiana. You can catch me every Friday at WCW Arena at 11:51 Kentucky Avenue. I also travel through Indiana as well, and I'm currently starting to take out of state bookings. You did that like you're definitely a pro because I've had people <laughs> 10, 15 years into the business, and they're like what do you want me to do once you got it you just rolled with it so great job great great job all right so that's the the meat and potatoes of everything folks as you know that we normally do here on can crushers but let's do the all the way as rewind back and everything zay who introduced you to professional wrestling mom dad you know aunt sally how did you find this crazy business so um I was rest. Uh, so when I was younger, me and my uh, I would live with my grandma on my dad's side, and I live um, with my uncle as well. And that we were like close in age. Like he was like, I want to say, ten, eleven at the time. I was no more than about like seven, six, seven. So he he watched wrestling a lot, and then I just started watching it with him, and I instantly got into it. And like I didn't know, well, like really once I started paying attention, that like it. It was really all around my family. Like a lot of people in my family was watching it at that point. Okay. That that's the great way. That's essentially how I got into professional wrestling too. It was my grandfather, but then an uncle would watch it with us and everything as well. Can you pinpoint yeah. and I, I know this is a a tough question because if you would ask me I'd be able to say, I don't know. But what was your first memory uh, of wrestling and I'm going to throw some names you know, what, what, did you remember seeing it first or you know who are some of the first people that you remember seeing so what's crazy because uh, I'm not even a, I'm not even I wasn't really a big fan of them and I'm still not now but well one of my youngest other one I'm not so my first memory was I came up here to Indianapolis to visit I was like was like probably four or five and my uncle was watching SmackDown, and I remember seeing uh, JBL on the TV. And then I ended up seeing Booker T, too. And what was crazy, my uncle had both figures. Like, he had a JBL and he had a Booker T. So I kind of, like, was just playing with both of them. And as I was watching it, and ever since then, it was like I was addicted. Did your uncle end up giving you those figures, and do you still have them? Because no, they're, they're probably worth something now, right? 
Yeah, I don't know what happened with his. I don't know if he lost them or not. Cause like I don't, he don't got Madrid. Was I still have mine? I still have all my pictures, but he don't got his. So I don't really know what he did with them. Do you still? And no shame in this, because again, Zay, I'm 46 and I have to battle my <laughs> wife every once in a while. But I still collect. Do you still collect figures? Oh yeah, I still collect them and I still play with them from time to time when I'm bored. I just fiddle with them a little bit. Yeah. Because there's no shame, and at the age yeah, at, at the age of 46, when nobody's home, you line up your whole card and you bring out your <laughs> ring and you sit on the floor like a 10 year old or something playing with your wrestling figures. There's no shame in that, so never stop doing that. Nah, that's exactly what happened. I just I just got the MJF figure like a like a few weeks ago. I'm just again age, uh, and I'm I'm gonna beat this to a dead horse probably. <laughs> all show and I apologize but yeah back in the day wrestling figures were like five bucks that it's a tough pill to swallow when you're buying one figure for like twenty five dollars isn't it I promise you bro it was was, for two of them you're spending fifty yeah it's it's sickening how much they are so you brought up Booker T and, and JBL but who are some of the people that you actually definitely did like and you really wanted to watch when you were young? Uh, Jeff Hardy, Shawn Michaels, John Cena, of course, uh, Eddie Guerrero, um, Chris Benoit, uh, Kurt Angle. Uh, legend after legend. You didn't throw anybody horrible in there. Like once in a while, somebody will say, and I'm going to get heat for this. Uh, once in a while, somebody will say like Carlito. They're like, who the hell watches Carlito? Who wants to watch Carlito? You know, <laughs> all yours are great. Yeah. All yours are great. So listen, you're young. You're young yet yeah. in, in life. You're young yet in the professional wrestling business and all of that. But what have you done before you got into wrestling so throughout like school and growing up kind of sports, because I link every sport to knowing that you're getting to professional wrestling. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. So what, what things have you done moving before you made a decision to get into wrestling? So before I was playing football, uh, I played in Mississippi from Pee Wee to my freshman year of high school. And then <clears throat> when I moved to Indianapolis, I played my uh, my sophomore year, <clears throat> and I ended up I ended up quitting football my sophomore year, like right uh, in September, because my papa, who um, who I look up to, he's like he was like one of my father figures. He had passed away, so I went back oh, to sorry. Mississippi, yeah, to attend his funeral. Then I stayed for a little bit in Mississippi before I moved back, and it's like once I moved back. Like something like the cause my coach had told me he was like you know you can just come back next season because I know how this affects you, but and I ended up not coming back. That's when I started like looking for wrestling schools, was ready to train. And and it's like you're reading my notes because my next question is, tell me how now you know you played football. Um, how does that transition to you getting into wrestling schools? How is that? Did you just get online and say, hey? I'm going to find the first one, or do you know somebody there, or do you find it because you went to an independent show? So I was, I, I messaged this promoter in Indianapolis. His name is Chris Doyle. Um, I don't know if he's still promoted, but he was one. Um, I was supposed to start at his school, but um, so I don't know what happened with his with his company, so he sent me to, to Joey Owen. Um, his, it's located in downtown Indianapolis, but he located me to him, and he was like, "Just go to them," because his brother was the is a photographer at WCW, and he also shoots for NL. He also shoots for MLW as well, and does stuff there. But um, yeah, he sent me to them, and I just started training with them from and from then on. It was the rest was history. So first day of training, because these are always the great stories. Uh, first day of training, you walk in. You're going to take over the world, right? I am going to kick ass and take names and look out wrestling world. Tell me about that first day. W- what was it like? And and I'm being nice, but did you kind of get humbled a little bit saying, oh, shit, this is not <laughs> what I expected? So 
I got in there and I, I thought I was ready. I was like, okay, this is the moment I was for, was waiting for. Like I was, I was excited because it was like I ain't never really, and I've really seen no. I've never been in a wrestling ring before. Like I went to like one show in my life before I ever trained. So it was just like I never actually stepped inside of a ring. So it was just I had to take it in like I was starstruck a little bit. And then like once we got down to practice and I like, actually got to doing it, like the first bump caught me off guard. I'm like, oh snap! Like, <laughs> I ain't know it was that. I ain't know the bump was would hurt that bad. Like I thought, of course, I feel it a little bit, but I ain't know it was as bad as it was. Like actually taking the bump. Yeah, that it shocked me. I ain't know it was that physical. <clears throat> After that first bump, and you kind of get acclimated that, all right, this is going to hurt, but I can wear that off. What was the hardest thing for you to actually catch on? Because I've heard stories from legends saying running the ropes was horrible, learning the psychology of it, or was it just the physicality? Because I, I've heard from across the board that some of them just take forever. What was your hard one to catch on to? So everything else came easy, like the bumps and all that. What was harder for me was like actually slowing down and going at a pace because I used to get told all the time, like they, they called me, they used to call me happy feet when I, when I would practice because like when I would do a lockup and then I would transition to like arm rigger or something, like I was constantly moving my feet. Like I was taking too many steps, way more steps than I had to. So that was the hard one for me and slowing down. Like I was always going through everything quick instead of like actually taking my time to let everything register and sink in. Like those were the two things that I struggled with the most when I was training. I can hear your coach now then saying, let it sell or let it cook or slow the story down. Right. Because that's, you were just in there and I don't know you verbatim at all. Uh, everybody, we can, we know this for a fact now, but I know what you're saying that you just punch them, kick them, do this, do that, and then it was like, holy crap! You have to let it sell, essentially, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They was just like slow down, like don't move too fast, because yeah, it was the way he explained it to me. And it once I once the more I kept at it, and it it caught on naturally. Cause... After your first, you know, little bit of training and did you ever have the the thoughts of? Ooh, this is more than I bargained for. Did you ever have the the breakdown moment of, no, maybe I'm not going to wrestle and I'm going to go do something else? So what's crazy is that I don't know if I was, I don't know if, if I was just so driven by the fact that this is what I wanted to do that got me through it. But like, I never, I never had that doubt or that, that moment that said, I can't do it. Like I never once, like doubted myself and was like, nah, this ain't for me. Like I actually pushed through it naturally. And I, and I didn't realize how natural I was pushing through it. Like I never thought about, Oh, this is too much. Like, or nothing like that. Like I never really thought about it that way. I just, like if I, when it came down to a move, well, like, of course there were certain moves that I was scared to take because you know, you got to get used to it. Right. So when I was scared to take a move, I just was like, I'll just think about it as, like my favorites that I look up to that is doing it like, Oh, this person is doing it. That person is doing it. And they, they got through it perfectly fine. So if they can do it, I can do it like that. That's how I looked at it. I never really unmotivated myself from, from it. And that's a great way, not only in wrestling, but in life, that is, that might be the life moment folks uh, of the podcast. And we try to always get those, but yeah, just look up to your your legends, your heroes. If it's whatever you're doing in life, if they can do it, you can do it too. And it's that simple. Yeah. It it really is because I think as human nature, we have this thing in the back of our head saying, nope, nope, nope. But if you can push that away, and Zay, you said it perfectly, it, there's there's no issue with it. All right. So let's talk about your first match you know you said you've been in in wrestling for roughly three years now how many matches about do you have underneath your belt and then tell us the story about your first match we want to know the jitters we want to know how excited you were and all of this all right so i got about 
I know I'm know I'm somewhere in the hundreds. Like I'm I don't know exactly where because I didn't had a lot. I didn't had me a handful of matches, but I started training in August. So by my I had my first match in November of that same year. So I, I trained August 2020. I had, I had my first match in November of 2020. Um, it happened because so every year where I train at, we also run a weekly show and we have. Uh, we do like Halloween stuff like every for every holiday. So for this particular event, the Halloween event, um, I dressed up as a guy I look up to that on the indies that, that trained me. His name is Dex Royal. Um, he, he was very hands on with training me too. Like we, cause we found similarities between us and a lot of people pointed that out. So I dressed up as him for Halloween. Cause I'm like a lot of people get parents. I, I did not, and I didn't have an idea for a costume. So I was like, I'll just dress up as you. He was like, oh, that'll be funny. So, yeah, I dressed up as him. And the guys that, that run our shows, they um they was like, you know what? We can put that in the store. That would be a great idea. Have Zay come out as as a as little deck and he wrestled as him. And, you know what I'm saying? They was like, he'll just wrestle the matches for him to lead up to the pay-per-view. So that's what I was doing. So my very first match was actually against uh, my mentor Dex because he was like, "Oh, I don't have nobody to defend my title against. I'll defend it against myself." And then I came out, we wrestled the match, and I'm not gonna lie, I was like, at, at first, as we when I found out about it, putting it together, I was excited. I was like, "Okay, this is the moment I've been waiting for. This is either, this is now like this is put up or shut up. Like it's either I, I do this and I and I continue with it, or I or I shit the bed. Sorry for my language, but no, that w- I, we're I, used to that here on Can Crushers." <laughs> But yeah, it was like, or I just messed up and, you know what I'm saying, that's it. So I was excited. Like, I promoted it. I was telling people, because I was, I was still in high school at the time. I started training when I was 17. So I had my debut at 17. So um, I was telling everybody at school about it. I was in a relationship, so I was excited because, you know, I never had that in high school. So it was like, I got that in wrestling. And then my dad was there and my girlfriend's mom at the, well, my girlfriend at the time, her mom was there. It was like, a, everything was, it was just, it came full circle at that point. So leading up to the match, like the night of the match, that's where the nerves kicked in. Like I was nervous at that point. Like heart was beating fast. My body was just sweaty. And I was like, I couldn't sit down. I couldn't sit still. So I was very like nervous. Once I got to the curtain, it was like I had an outer body experience. So once I hit the curtain and just like to to be in that spotlight in that moment, it was like I had way too many emotions and way too many feelings at that point. And it was like once I was in there, I couldn't even hear the cheers from the crowd. I just was focused on the match. And I didn't realize how good I did until I went back and watched it. So by the end, it was like once 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 that happened, I was like, okay, now I got the feeling. I just kept pushing. It's nice. By the way, I love how you made reference to the curtain because as a ring announcer, uh, I get the same thing. I'm very anxious in everything. So I'm back behind the curtain before I pop out right off the bat to start the show and everything. And I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to do wrong? The curtain is magical in professional wrestling, isn't it? Like you could be having the worst day of your life and then boom, you come out of that curtain. You're a different person. Like, yeah, you is. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't had those experiences multiple times. I have a bad day, or I'll be going through some of the situation, and it's like I'll be, I'll be down and sad and gloomy all the next day, like trying to stay in my little shell. But it's like once I hit that curtain, it's like everything goes away, and then I come back to the back, and I'll be, I even be happy like after the match, like I'm talkative, and I'm, it's like I'm back to normal. Yep, I agree. I agree. I love that you had kind of your your first match with your mentor. Knowing that you were having your first match with your with your mentor, um, did that kind of relax you a little bit more comparative to you know you're having a match with me? You don't know me. We might have went over it a little bit backstage, but you knew that he, no matter what, because this is the number one thing in wrestling. And Zay, I'm sure you're going to back me up with it. Is to take care of your opponent. Right, without a yeah. doubt, that's number yeah. one. You knew he had your back no matter what, right? Yeah, yeah, most definitely because it's like, like after after that, like, cause like I my first few matches was within his storyline, so 
I wrestled him first, wrestled somebody else, wrestled somebody else, and then, like, we'll go end up on the same show in another town, and they put us together every time. So it was just, like, it got to a point to where now we know each other like the back of each other's hands. Like, we we had a match not too long ago, and it was, like, a banger. So it was, like, I feel like that compares to being against somebody you don't know because I had that experience, too, going against the new person, and it made me nervous because it's, like, okay, I don't know this person. I've never, like, you know what I'm saying? We've never trained together, none of that. So now I got to put trust in him. Whereas if I was back wrestling my mentor or somebody I trained with, I could, I would have, because we, we've we already been through this together. So yeah, I, I definitely see that. And I, I, I've i actually been through that. Yeah. Forgot to ask you this. Uh, when you make the decision to get into professional wrestling and you tell parents, girlfriends, you know, friends and everything, what are their thoughts? Are some of them like, you're crazy, you're going to be the man, you're going to be the myth, you're going to be the legend? Tell me some of those processes that parents, you know, parents essentially are like, oh, my little boy, I don't want him getting hurt. <laughs> did that? Did you get any of that? So, my, so I've read, my, like, my mom, she already knew I was going to eventually do it because it was always something I wanted to do. It just, I played football in school and up until... I got old enough to do pro wrestling because that already that that was already my goal since I said I wanted to play. I mean, since I wanted to do wrestling. So my mom always told me like chase your dreams, always always chase your dreams or whatnot. So everybody I grew up with knew. When I first told my dad, he was I don't know how he took it. He was just like I don't know what he thought about it. He was just telling me like yeah go go do it like you'll be. And he's like, you'll be on TV making money and stuff like that. Like, go go make that money. When I told my girlfriend at the time, though, she she was like, she she couldn't really take it serious. Like, she didn't know if I was being serious or not until I told her that I was going, like, I had a date to go train and stuff like that. And then, like, every once I did it, like, everybody supported me. It was to the point to where even people at school was, was asking me about it. And I don't even know how, how they found out about it. Right. Yeah, that that's cool. It sounds like you have a hell of a support system, and that's number one for an indie wrestler, to have a support system like you have. The rest yeah. is all on you, and it seems like, one, you have a level head, and from uh, the clips and videos and everything I did see, you got the talent, Zay. Eh? It, it really is all about the talent and who you know. You're going to get there. So I'll give you my, my blessing and everything as we move forward, but, yeah, you, you got it in the ring, dude. You really do. Thank you, thank you. All right, so this is where we find out who the Mississippi Bad Boy Zay Gates is. My three people. All right, let me give you my three people. When I've seen the clips and everything, I instantly think of these people. Then tell me how either horrible I did or, you know, if I'm spot on. When I saw some of your clips, I saw Leo Rush. Instantly saw Leo Rush. You move in the ring like him. You're <laughs> fluent. So that's number one. Number okay. two is Gargano because you can get technical. If you need to, okay. you, you can get technical. And the other one, you may not know, but um, he's a wrestler in Oklahoma, Texas area. His name is Kane Carter. A lot of He's been on the show before, but that's actually the first par- person I've ever seen that made me think of you, you know, right off the bat. I thought of Kane Carter, then I thought of Leo Rush, and then I thought of Johnny Gargano. So you might not know Kane, but that's okay. Look him up. He's doing amazing things down down in the Oklahoma, Texas area. But am I close with uh, Leo and Gargano at all? So what's crazy, <clears throat> Leo is actually one of my favorites today. So you, you hit the hammer on the – you hit the you hit the nail on the head with, the, with that one. Uh I definitely look up to Leo in today's time for wrestlers. Um, Gargano, <clears throat> I like Gargano. I've seen a couple of his matches. I think he's, I think he's one of the, the best wrestlers coming out of NXT. Like one of his best matches, I feel like, was um, him and Adam Cole. So, oh yeah. Uh, I, I watch Gargano from time to time. Uh, I definitely have to check out Kane Carter. Yeah, check him out. So if you could put three wrestlers that today kind of make up who you are. And I know because we've had Manny Fernandez, NWA star from long ago on the show, and it changes all the time. But three wrestlers today that, you know, make up who 
Zay is. Who are those three wrestlers? So, of course, like we just talked about, Leo Rush. Right. Um, Carmelo Hayes okay. and Ricky Starks. Ooh, why did I forget about Ricky? Uh, Carmelo. Honorable mention, honorable mention, Seth Rollins. Okay, honorable mention. All, all amazing. All amazing. Um, before we get into some of the silly stuff that we kind of do on here, when you were training, did they have you do like tape study from long ago? And, and long ago for you is not that long ago for many others. Sorry. <laughs> But uh, did they make you watch anything from like the eighties or nineties or anything? Um, they didn't. They didn't force me to. They just suggested like, "Hey, these are the guys I think you should check out." Um, look, and you know, my the, my personal that I like to check out from the nineties is, of course, Shawn Michaels. I like to watch uh, Bret Hart too, and I like to watch a lot of The Rock from the nineties. All right, so you brought up that whole mess. Um, was the Montreal screw job a work or was it real? Um, <laughs> so I watched the, I've actually watched multiple documentaries, and I, my favorite one was the uh, I don't remember exactly how they uh, what they titled it, but it was it was the one documentary that actually Brett had the mic uh, tied to him, and they actually recorded some of it from that day that that is in the documentary. Oh, the so dark side of the hearts, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I watched that a couple of times. Like I even go back and watch it. Um, from what I've seen from there, I feel like I feel like it was it, it was real because Vince at the time they was doing the the Monday Night Wars, and you know what I'm saying Brett. They with the competition that they had, of course, money was going to play into the situation and. Vince was trying to increase the product. He couldn't afford Brett's contract, like from what he, from what he, um, from what he negotiated with them. So, I, I feel like it was real. Uh, Brett, I feel like Brett should have. I feel like if they came up to a conclusion, they should have stuck with the conclusion instead of taking it that far. But I feel like, from my personal opinion, I don't think it was a work. I don't think like, it was a work either. And our opinions clearly, it's been resolved by then, by now. Uh, everybody wouldn't yeah. care what either one of us say, and that's no disrespect to you or me. But uh, if you could point a finger at one person, who are you pointing it at, though? I'll go first, and it's clearly Bret Hart. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll say Bret, too. Okay. This, they don't get in any hot water or anything. All right. Let's kind of take a little break a away from wrestling and get to know Zay a little bit outside of the ring. You know, not deep and everything, but we always throw out some stupid or some just off-the-topic wrestling questions. So, okay. what's your hidden talent? You know, don't say wrestling because everybody knows where you're a great wrestler. <laughs> but what, what kind of nonsensical thing can you do that you don't tell a lot of people? But you're going to now tell thousands here on the podcast. Um, I can dance a little bit. Um, I like to play drums a lot. Uh, I used to play drums when I was in church, so uh, I can drum. And, of course, I like to game, too, so I'm a good gamer. All right, perfect. That was coming up. What are you playing? Because I had a feeling you were a gamer. I, I did. So what? what's your game <laughs> yeah. of choice right now? Uh, I play a lot of Fortnite. Um, I like to play Madden. I love to play Madden. I'll play. I'll what's crazy is I'll play a WWE game when I first get it, but after like after so many months of me playing it, I'll just not quit playing it until the next one come out. And then that's me. Um, that's 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 yeah, already played, me with a fight forever. By the way, do you have fight forever yet? No, I gotta get it. I'm kind of I'm kind of mad that Punk ain't. Oh, well, Punk ain't wait. Punk's, Punk Punk's in it. Tripping. Yeah, it was somebody else that was missing off the game. That I was mad about not being on there. I'm trying to remember who it was. You you brought up Fortnite, and I played a little bit with my son when Fortnite actually kind of just came out. And listen, again, I'm 46. I I can't do what you youngsters can do on video games anymore. <laughs> yeah. But the Stadium Stampede, when you do get Fight Forever, the Stadium Stampede for you Fortniteers that love it is exactly that. You're just going around in a stadium, beating the hell out of everybody, trying to get to the the circle before you die and the world explodes up. 
but it's, it's, it's at a <laughs> yeah. slower pace. It's so much of a slower pace, and it's so fun. So I get Fortnite now. I just can't do building and running and everything all at one time. So yeah, I can. I, I'm I'm a terrible builder. Oh, you just you hide and shoot then, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. I hide and shoot. I'm good at aiming and shooting on games. So I just hide and shoot and all that other stuff. I'm not a builder. I just gave away my game plan for whoever yeah. played with me. Yeah. Well, don't <laughs> don't give them who you are online then. Don't you don't have to do any of that. <laughs> if, go, let's look for Zay. Yeah. Well, there you go. He's gonna give it away anyway. If you could, it, this is dead or alive or you know whatever. If you could spend a day with anybody in history, who and why? Michael Jackson. Really. Uh, yeah, I, I love Michael. That's one of my favorite singers of all time. Michael is goaded. Nice. I I completely respect that. I love that, actually. You kind of just, it, it was a shock, but it was like, yeah. Um, top three, top, and this is going to be rough for you, I'm sure. Top three favorite songs of Michael Jackson, then. Um, Dirty Diana is one. Um, let me see. I like, uh, Heaven can wait, and my third one. Uh, this is hard. I'll say. Uh, shoot. Uh, I'll give it to. Uh, Heartbreaker. Okay. Okay. I always I just rat- rattle through some songs into my head right now. Um, I love Black or White. Pretty mm-hmm. Young Thing is probably one of my favorites. And yeah. Dirty Diana, now that that's just stuck into my head, is probably there. Don't get me wrong. I like Bad. I like Thriller. Yeah. I, I really love Thriller, especially the dance, because I can't dance, but I will dance to Thriller anytime it comes on. The, the whole... Um, video that they do where the, the zombies are dancing and all that. Yeah. I'll dance yeah. like an idiot, say. I had the Michael Jackson tape on the Wii. I used to play that all the time. Really? I mm-hmm. never knew anybody that had that. You loved it? Yeah, I had it on I had, yeah, I had it on I had it on the Wii when I was uh like in middle school and then I got it again when I moved up here. I got it again, me and my girlfriend at the time, we decided to get it and play it. We were like 17 and 16 playing that. Nice. Nice. I, I love it. I really do. Uh, final stupid question, uh, essentially. What's your favorite meal of the day? Um, Pork chops and macaroni. Oh, all right. So we're going like supper. I, I love Alfredo, too. I love Alfredo. Okay. I always say this because this has been started by wrestlers in Oklahoma who have been on the show, and it always transitions into this anyway. When you make breakfast cereal, can you please tell me how you make your cereal? I want to find out if you're a sociopath or if you're a normal human being. (laughs) So I get my bowl, then I go, I get my cereal, I put it in the bowl, and then I pour the milk. Okay. You're not a sociopath then. You're smart. Yeah. Do you know anybody? That pours the milk in first. No, nah, I, I don't think I don't think I ever. You pour that? My sister does. She she put milk in the bowl, and I even though she do that, she just heard it the question and said she do it. She's nuts. Run, Zay. <laughs> Run. Those people are different. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, all right, back to wrestling to kind of get into some of the harder, you know, questions. How much wrestling do you watch now? And then kind of like who are some of your favorites? Are you spending hours watching wrestling and all of that? Um, So I watch wrestling. If I'm not watching a show or studying every day, I'm at least um, I'm at least watching a promo on YouTube or TikTok or something like that. I, I try to get as much wrestling knowledge as I can. And I watch everything. Like I, I watch AEW. I watch WWE. I watch NXT. I even try to uh, chime in and watch a little um, MLW from here and there, or I watch Impact as well. Like I try to watch companies that I would go to. Like I, I, right now, I would love to go to MLW or AW. Um, 
I even watched some Japan. Like I, I watched a little bit of Japan too. So and I have favorites from each from each uh company. Like right now MLW, um one of my favorites is Enzo. Yes. And um Thank you for giving him some love by the way. Yes. Yeah. I I've been watching Enzo since I was a kid. And um who else is another one of my favorites? Impact, uh Leo Rush. Uh of course, I already said Leo Rush. Um, AEW, Ricky Stark, Darby Allen a little bit, Jeff Hardy, uh, who else to name a few? Uh, I like, I like Jay White. I love Jay White. Yeah. He's cool. From Japan, um, Michael Elgin, um, uh, Kazuchika Okada, NXT, Carmelo Hayes, top tier. No, that's, 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 that's one number of my one, favorites. yeah. Yeah, um, in WWE right now on on Raw, I'll give it to Seth Rollins. He's he's the goat. SmackDown, I love Butch. Well, Pete Dunne. I've been watching Pete Dunne since his NXT UK days. From then on, I love Pete Dunne. And um, Jay Uso. Yeah. Is there is there a storyline that you're just extremely hooked in right now that? Even as a wrestler, as a talent, and you know how kind of storylines work, because I do this as well as ring announcer, but is there something that you're like, man, I'm just a fan of this because this is just everything I wanted? Um, right now, I would say I'm deeply... Like I was deep, I'm deeply invested in the uh, the Adam Cole MJF thing. Like I'm, I'm really invested in that. I was for a little bit. I was also as well invested in the um the bloodline. Like the bloodline was one of the most interesting stories of all time. Um, do you feel it's getting yeah, a little bit long though? Now the bloodline. But, no, I, I mean to be honest, like it, I, I. It, attention to how long this was going like I didn't realize I didn't realize this was going on for three years until they first mentioned it like I I just never paid attention to it like that it's crazy how storylines work because a story like as a wrestler with me looking at it I don't know if anybody else look at it this way but um I feel like a storyline could be going on without anybody even knowing it like I feel like those are those storylines that just happen on accident like something happening now it turned into a story. Like I never knew that it was going on for three years until they first said it. Like I didn't pay attention to it. Yeah. Those are the best storylines though, that you don't know it's a story. I completely get it. I completely get it to, to piggyback everything that I just asked. Can you watch wrestling as a fan still, or do you catch yourself saying, Oh, now I see, you know, are you always making it a little bit of tape study too? Um, so it depends. Like with the bloodline storyline, it had me like that for a minute. Like, and then it got to those points, like to where I was looking at it from a fan perspective now because it was it was so unpredictable. Like, if I can, pre- like, if some, something happens and I can predict it, then yeah, I, it, it's hard for me to go back to the fan aspect. But like, when it's when they throw curveballs and stuff like that, that's when I get back into the fan stage of it. Like, I'll go back and watch some old story. Like, right now, I'm watching the storyline of Raw from 2004 with Benoit, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H. And it's like, you know, I try to go back and watch it to see if I can predict it because I don't know. I don't. I, there's storylines where I don't know the ending to it. So I'll go back and try to see, okay, how did it end? And I'll try to predict it and call him back. I think this is going to happen, this, this, and this. Try to test myself. Nice. So you nice. you continue to do tape studies throughout. And I, I like that because it's it's continuous practice in your head and growing within the business as well, right? Right. Yeah. What is the best advice that anybody in the professional wrestling world has given you to move forward with your career? Um, one that I've heard, I, I don't remember which, which, uh, oh, Elijah Burke. Uh, I met the Pope, uh, actually on multiple occasions. 
He's a and, wonderful human being, by the way. Yeah, he is, man. He like just hearing him talk and hearing his story and stuff like that. Like he he he's dope, bro. But yeah, one of the things that actually he was one of the people that told me to slow down, and he also told me not to do like certain like if 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 it doesn't matter, don't do it. Like there was one time we were on a show in Indiana. I don't remember what state we or what city we was in. But I did. I was in a fatal four way tag match, and I did a, um, I did a, I did a dive. It was a front flip dive off the top turnbuckle. When I came backstage, he was like, "That was stupid," and he was like, "Because, you know, what I'm saying the match, it it didn't really need it. Like I didn't have to really do it. Yeah, and he was. It, it didn't call for it, essentially. Yeah, that yeah. You, and you, then he. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then that's when he went on to teach me to slow down, like and and like sell correctly with certain stuff. Like he was, he taught me like basically the little stuff. It, it, it's the little stuff that matters. So that was some advice he gave me there. And then I got I got another piece of advice from Michael Elgin, and he was just telling me to like just stick to it. Like it, the, as long as I stick to it and invest in myself, I'll I'll make it. I got everything I need to make it in this business. You do. Uh, we said that about 20 minutes ago, that you you are a, a future star with everything that you do inside that ring. Um, to go back to the Pope, I, I really love that he told you that because that's putting your body on the line when it wasn't called for, right? You know, that's yeah. you could have done it with whoever you were you're facing that night, knowing that you were going to do it safe and everything, but it's that inch this way or that way that... Uh, it doesn't sell. So I'm glad the Pope told you that, and I, I'm glad that stuck with you because that means a lot to a an uber-talented kid like you are that's going to be all over the place. I'm telling you that. Wrestling continues to change. Good, bad, good, bad. You know, it flips back and forth. But what is one thing in professional wrestling? There's stigmas in there that are just still kind of – you know, you have the the old boys club or this, that, or the other. What would you love to see just erased out of professional wrestling? Because it really just drags it down a little bit. Um, I feel like we got to, one thing I hate that we have is social media. And Thanks. You're, social you're media getting rid of me then, essentially. Because, no, nah, nah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, it's like, not, not, and, and I'm not talking about the, the positive, cause there's, of course there's positives that come to it, but it's just like the dirt sheets and, and like the fans, they like to, like they pull, like pulling the curtain back. That's what I meant. Like, yes, we need to erase pulling back the curtain because <clears throat> I seen it the other day on Twitter. Um, the Braun Breaker, Von Wagner storyline where Braun Breaker, um, essentially he just said forget it and just he wanted to end von break of uh, von wagner and he smashed his head with the steel steps but they didn't show it they cut it they like cut the the, the cameras like like it went dark essentially and a fan was sitting by recording it and then ended up posting it on twitter and saying this is what really happened and of course you can see that that braun missed von's head but like why did you have to kill it like why did you have to why did you have to be the person to point out, oh, like, obviously we know it didn't happen, but you didn't have to. But the suspense was still tell. there. The suspense was still yeah, there. Like, like yeah, like, the suspense. Yeah, because everybody, like, I, I saw the comments. They were like, oh, my God, he killed him and all this other stuff. And you ruined it because you want to be the one to, to say, oh, this is what really happened. Like, of course we know. You don't got to kill it. Right. I love that, actually. So I will I will take back that snide little comment that I made at the beginning of your answer. But no, you uh, you're completely right. We don't need to. Let me get on my high horse for a second. We don't need to know about what Punk did backstage. We don't need to know about this. We don't need yeah. to know about that. Let the business and the talent wrestlers uh, organization take care of that by itself. That's their right. own business. Enjoy wrestling for why we started to enjoy it because it takes us away from reality. And you gave the perfect right. example of I, I did see that clip of the kid. So what's that kid do? For for fifteen minutes, he has the spotlight that he gave up what gave, what really happened in wrestling. 
we're going to forget about him, that kid. And we're going to still remember, you know, Wagner and and Breaker that did this. So we'll put our own, like, concept together. Great point, by the way, by you, Zay. Great point, because nobody said that before. Nobody on the podcast has said social media. And I like how you put the spin on it. I really do. So what are your goals here for the rest of 2023, you know? Um, my goal is to just, um, learn more and gain more experience and like, just, just hone my craft as much as I can, because I feel like as long as I just stick to, stick to learning and stick to wanting to like wanting to learn, it'll help me in the long run because I've never like being in this business. I've never had heat that I know of with any vet in the locker room. Like I get along with them just fine. And one of the biggest things, not to toot my own horn, but one of the biggest things that they compliment me on is my my will to learn and, like, my, my, my wants, the need to listen and learn more about the business and hear what the vets have to say. Nice. The respect for the business, wrapping that up easily, that was perfect. Is there, in 2023 yet, we're still talking, is there some more states that you want to check off or do you want to still kind of be – homebody in in indiana or do you want to kind of maybe you know i'll I'll throw pennsylvania out there do you want to trickle over to pennsylvania do you want to go down to texas or anything like that here in 2023 yeah i'm down to go anywhere like i've been to colorado i've been to michigan i've been to um i've been to illinois i have a booking coming up in california next month on the 29th so I'm willing to travel anywhere. Like, just give me, give me a date, give me a time, and I'm there. Like, like you have to get out there, and I, I want to meet new people and gain a bigger fan base and wrestle the best out there. Like, I want to wrestle anybody that I can. Like, just give me a name, I go in there with them. Like, I, I just want to. I there is no place that I wouldn't go. Is there? You don't have to give the organization or the match or anything. Uh, essentially, I want the state. Is there a place that you have definitely loved more than any place? That I've wrestled in so far? Yeah, that you've wrestled at so far. Um, So I'd say I, I enjoyed working that uh, the Illinois show that I worked. Um, it was it was a show It's called in, in Danville, Illinois. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it was just like the the setup, the, the hospitality I got, and it was a big crowd. So it was just like that. That was one of the best states I've traveled to. They gave me the best crowd so far. Nice, nice. Now goals. Let's say in two to three years. I, I don't like going any farther than that because you know that's that that's now just like way out of reach. So two to three years. Yeah. Would you like to? Maybe travel overseas. We you want to definitely see yourself on AEW Impact or someplace like that. That's for sure. But give me something that you really want to do, and no matter what, you'd like to check it off your bucket list in two to three years. I want to go wrestle in Canada, and I want to go wrestle in the UK. Like I will go wrestle in in either of those countries. Okay. Because just the uh, I look there's guys that you know I look up to from the UK like. Like like I said before, Pete Dunn is one of my favorites from the UK. Um, from Canada, of course, I watched Bret Hart, Chris Benoit, uh, Michael Elgin, Kenny Omega, so and Chris Jericho. So I would I would like to go to those two those two countries and, and wrestle there too, and try to learn some of their cultures and learn some new stuff. All right, nice, nice. Th- and those are all easily, uh, you know, Canada is a hop stick a stop a hop. <laughs> skip and a jump away from you essentially so you can just jump right over england the other way you know you might have to do a couple other things but yeah that's that's clearly obtainable in two years so i I love those goals all right can you look back uh, you know you and your uncle playing with booker t and jbl the figures and everything can you now take like an out-of-body experience and look back and say man i wish i could float down there and tell that little kid you're gonna make it does that give you kind of like a little fuzzy feeling right now? It do. It does, man, because, like, I've always said I was going to do it, but it's just, like, coming, like, you know, coming up in Mississippi, it's rare anybody, it's rare anybody make it. And I feel like if I would have stayed in Mississippi, I probably wouldn't have made it because they only wrestle every couple months there. 
So I'm, I'm actually glad that that I, I made the decision I made and to be like even to be in this point. Like I haven't really done as much, but for the little bit that I have done, like I, I'm I'm proud of myself because like I said I was going to do it and I've done it. I, again, you're reading my you're reading my notes because the the next question is if something because re- listen I'll be the the bearer of bad news your wrestling career can end in a a hot second do you understand that the, with what goes on in the ring and everything there could be a slip up and I don't want to be the bad guy but it can happen if you yeah. were not able to wrestle anymore could you look back and say I'm happy with everything I've done yeah most definitely I can I can say that, like, and and I, I I would be, it would break my heart, but I would, I would be okay with what I did. I mean, I would, of course, I would feel like I could have did more, but I right. wouldn't have felt like that I had a terrible career. Right. It, yeah, and you have decades left, so I hate asking that question to somebody this young into the business. But I always, I always want to say. I, I want somebody honestly though to say no. I'd be pissed off, and I really wanted to do more. But you guys always give the nice answer of like, no, I'd be happy with it. You know, I want to do more, but yeah, that's good. All right, this is my favorite question though because I love taking this a different way. Because you're going to be asked this on podcasts as you continue to go on them and everything. Um, what is your dream match? But I throw in a couple stipulations. I want to know who. I want to know where you want it, and I want to know what type of match. Oh, uh, let me see. So I'll give you from one. Is it cool if I give you one pass and one present? Yeah, this is your podcast time. You can give me if you want to wrestle your mom and write that write that down. I'm all right <laughs> with that too. So one of my um, so I'll give you one from the past real quick. So. My dream match from the past, me versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania in a ladder match. Nice. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Yes. And then from the present, I would say me and Leo Rush at SummerSlam for the Cruiserweight Championship. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put a little caveat on the the Leo Rush one. By the way, if you didn't know he was going to say Leo Rush this long into the podcast, you're crazy. But (laughs) I'm going to make it an X Division match. It it could be for the Cruiserweight or whatever, but it's going to be an X Division match. I want to see both of you guys swinging from those Xs from Impact long ago. (laughs) Okay, I'll do that too. Yeah, I think you guys would. I'm not going to swear that much, but just burn the house down. It almost came out. The F word almost came out. I'm trying to be nice to you today. <laughs> Normally, I let those go, but you, you've been good. All right, so tell everybody, this is your time. Tell everybody where you're going to be. Give them your socials so you can you know, follow along. And do you have any merch out there that if anybody like DMs you that you know you could ship it to them? Or are you on Pro Wrestling Tees? Or give them all your shtick right now. Okay, so y'all can uh, find me on Instagram at it. With two, so it's I T S S Z A E and then two underscores. Um, that's where you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook. Just look me up, Zay Gates. I'm also on Twitter as um, the same as my Instagram. Um, I'm current, I've had merch. Um, I ran out, so I'm currently getting more in stock. If you message me, I can show y'all some designs and get y'all through there. I'm trying to get on Pro Wrestling T, so I'm gonna have to apply for that again. So yeah, I got more merch coming up. And, you know, like I said, you can catch me in Indianapolis, Indiana, downtown, or I'm trying to get more bookings out. So, hey, any promoters that's looking for a guy to, to, to get down in the ring, I'm your guy. There you go. Zay, it has been a blast having you on the show. Guys, go out and reach out to him to get some merch. Get it while it's new, hot, and fresh before anybody else gets it. Kind of push him along to get stuff made uh, as well. Plus, by, by buying merch and making him you know bigger, essentially, on the old interweb and everything, he'll be able to open up his pro wrestling tea store. And that's what we really want because, listen, it's not lucrative right now in the independent scene. 
But if you can buy a shirt once he gets on, you know, pro wrestling tees and everything, it helps out every little bit, right? All right. All right, Zay. It's been a blast. Did I miss anything that you wanted to bring up that I uh, kind of skimmed over? You just want to say, hey, I want to say one more thing, or what's up? I know. I just, you know, everything was good. Thank you for having me, man. This, this has been fun. Hey there. This is Kaya McKenna, the conduit of karma, and you're listening to the Can Crushers podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Zay Gates, the Mississippi bad boy. How humble is he? He was super chill humble, understanding. This has been a topic for a while, by the way, that Rome hasn't been built in a day or isn't built in a day or whatever the hell it is. But you know how we go here on Can Crushers. We just throw uh, isms up against the wall and however they come, that's how they stay. But he understands. It steps to get to where he wants. He's not going to run right off the bat. He's just going to slowly climb up and do what is best. The advice from the Pope, awesome. Awesome. That is life advice, more so than even advice for professional wrestling. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And, man, I love the stories. I love the bring it back to the family, him and his uncle playing with that Booker T and JBL wrestling figure. And, man, your wrestling figures are just way too expensive anymore. You know, they really are. That's unbelievable. But that's how he got into professional wrestling, essentially – starting with wrestling figures and then watching on TV. It's just those stories that you get to hear behind the indie scene because we don't know them. And this is why Can Crusher's Wrestling Spotlight has become because we know the stories of Randy Orton and so on and so on. We don't know the stories of indies. And that's what we love to do here on Can Crusher's. Guys, make sure you follow the Mississippi bad boy, Zay Gates, across the board and continue to follow his career. He's going to take off, and I was proud to have him here on Can Crushers. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones you love them, because you never know. <laughs> <laughs>